Xavier from Remick Museum and Farm, and I thought I would share another fun lesson that you all can do at home, and my inspiration this week has been our, uh, our flower gardens and our wild spaces here around the gardens, and I thought I would just think about uh, pollinators. I've been just so lost in the amount of different pollinators I've been seeing busy at work with our beautiful flowers. And this is something that we can build off some of our previous lessons. Uh, we worked a little bit with insects, we thought about biodiversity and the amounts of different species that might be in an area. And if you've got a spot where you have one or two or 10 or 100 different types of flowers, uh, you can look and see what kind of pollinators you're finding as well. It's a great introduction to insects. It's a great way to look at different species. It's a great thing to think about pollinators. And it doesn't have to be, you know, every, a lot of different plants, even things that we don't think about often, flower as well. So you can find these just in your backyard. If you've got a garden, it's a great spot. Uh, in the forest, in a meadow, wherever you have access to safely be right now, it's a great spot to look for pollinators. So let's see some, uh, let's see what pollinators we have here at Remick Museum and we can talk a little bit about what they're doing and how things uh, work. So let's, let's go along. Majority of the pollinators that we're going to see today are insects. And unfortunately, a lot of those insects are in decline. And this has to do with habitat loss and the overuse of pesticides, especially insecticides. So a couple things that we do at our uh, farm is we do not use pesticides in the gardens and we leave a lot of our grass tall without mowing. And along with leaving natural habitat, we also try and plant some insect-friendly plants in the garden as well. And our first pollinator on our tour today are the bees. And bees are super important pollinators. You can see this little bee here with all that pollen in its pollen baskets on that hair that it has on its legs. And honeybees are often thought about the main pollinators, but they are an introduced species and the native bees are really even more important. One of those types of native bees are bumblebees. And like most pollinators, what they're wanting to do is get the nectar from the flower. But these plants, uh, they have kind of forced the bees to have to work for it sometimes so they get covered in pollen. You can see how far that bumblebee had to crawl in to get all covered in pollen to get that nectar. Unfortunately, bumblebees are really some of the, the bees in decline. I'm only seeing a couple different species here. There are upwards of 10 uh, species of bumblebees just in New Hampshire. And you can see how, how hairy they are, makes them excellent pollinators, but unfortunately they really are struggling. Now, wasps, which include things like yellow jackets and hornets as well, uh, can be pollinators as well. They're in the same order as bees, uh, kind of like distant relatives. Um, they're not as fuzzy as a lot of the bees are, so they don't do quite as good of a good job. They don't have the ability to keep as much pollen. You won't see those big pollen baskets like you do on a bumblebee or a, a smaller solitary bee even. Um, but they are still getting nectar. They're going from flower to flower, so they're still spreading pollen. And of course, if you're allergic to bees or wasps, you want to be extra cautious and maybe not even try and monitor bees and wasps. I find that they're not very aggressive towards me. They're just concentrating on their food. And next up on our tour of pollinators, we have butterflies and moths and these are often the favorites of those watching insects in their gardens. Uh, many people plant flowers and other plants that specifically attract butterflies and moths, and for good reason. They're beautiful. Uh, they are pretty amazing to watch even as caterpillars and their full metamorphosis. Uh, really a cool process and they are also awesome pollinators. Uh, very efficient 
at being able to fly from flower to flower, get nectar for themselves, but also then transfer that pollen to where it needs to go. And these are absolutely one of my favorites, the hummingbird moth. Uh, they are very much looking like a hummingbird, but they are actually a moth. They are able to flap so fast that they hover like a hummingbird and are able to feed that way. So pretty awesome find. And one of the really important reasons why uh, pollinators are important for humans is that a lot of the foods that we eat require insects to pollinate them or move that pollen from flower to flower. And here's one of my favorite garden visitors, the Eastern Tiger Swallowtail Butterfly. And it's just really fun to be able to get close and observe and watch them feed uh, at these flowers and get that nectar from from these cool plants we have. And bees and moths and butterflies are not the only pollinators. There's lots of flies, including what I think here is a, a bee fly, a mimic, and beetles. Uh, even birds, all of these are wonderful pollinators as well. And a lot of these are, again, hundreds if not thousands of species that can help with this process. For my last stop of the day, I figured I'd go over to the pond and it was pretty exciting to see the great blue heron back. I had not set, seen it yet this year. Not a pollinator, but a super cool nature find. And it's always okay to uh, take some time to observe things that maybe you're not focused on. So often everywhere that you're at, you're going to have some different plants. Uh, over by the pond is where I find one of my favorite things to observe, and that's jewelweed. And this is an example of something that you could do for your lesson, right? You could observe the jewelweed, then make some predictions and observe some more. So maybe think about what pollinators are going to visit and how do they move that pollen once they visit. All right, well, that's our video for the week. Thank you for joining me. Uh, hopefully you were able to see some really wonderful pollinators, maybe figure out what species they were, maybe what flowers and plants they like the most. Uh, if there is any sort of uh, adaptations that either the plant or the pollinator has the best move that pollen or get that pollen and you know there's just so much to discover so uh, keep keep going out there keep looking every day it's just so much fun to see these different species interacting with their environment uh, if you're liking what you're seeing, make sure that you like and subscribe if you're following on YouTube. If you're following along on Facebook, you can give us a like and certainly share all this if you think someone would enjoy. And I'll see you all again real soon. 